We've had kind of a dearth of GM vehicles recently. Is that the right word, dearth? Glut? A lot of them. Anyway, I'm sick of working on them and we want to keep it fair. So let's shift gears, no pun intended, and work on a Ford. This is a 2008 Ford F-150. It's a pretty basic truck, two wheel drive. It's got the 4.6 V8. Pretty low miles. I think it's only got about 70,000 miles on it. The customer complaint is that he, he went to back it out of the garage. He put it in reverse. It kind of slammed into gear hard. He backed it out, put it in drive. The truck will drive forward, but it doesn't have any power. It kind of feels like something's dragging. I guess there were some warnings on the dash. He thinks that possibly it has a bad shift solenoid and that it may be stuck in two gears at the same time. Just poking around a little bit, it has a code P0731, which is an incorrect gear ratio. Uh, I'll warn you guys right now, I'm not an expert about automatic transmissions. This is about as far as I wanna go with one. If anything internal has to be replaced, you know, we're just gonna send it out. I, I install them and remove them, but I don't get into the internals. That's a job for a specialist. Oh, I was wrong. 107,000 miles. All right, here's our code. P0731, transmission gear one. Incorrect ratio. So I believe that means it tried to shift into first gear and it compared the input and output speed of the transmission and it didn't like what it saw. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna pull up some data. And so it says no error. And it says currently that shift solenoid one is on, shift solenoid two is off. So in service data here, we have a little truth table and it shows you what solenoid configuration is required for each of the four gear ratios. So it should start with a one on and two off, like what it is. And then to shift to second gear, it turns the first solenoid off. I believe what's happening is that, that this guy here is stuck off. It even has a table that shows you that, so. Yeah, if SSA is always off, Essentially, you have nothing but second gear. Anyway, let's fire it up. It has kind of a whining sound. Shift it into reverse, you'll hear it. It, it really slams in hard. Yeah, that's not normal. Now, if we shift to neutral, you should hear that whining sound. started. And when you first start it, you don't have that whining noise. You have to shift through a gear first. Okay, let's pick it up in the air and we'll try to do some, uh, some electrical testing. I'm going to bi-directionally control the solenoid with my scan tool. I can turn it on and off, and we're just gonna listen for a click. So. On. Off. On. Off. Okay. Let's try solenoid two. On, off. So it's definitely doing something. I'd say one is quieter than two, but that may have more to do with where it's located in the transmission or the solenoids themselves may be different, I don't know. We're gonna to try to do a line pressure test. This port three is the EPC port. 
electronic pressure control. So there's actually a solenoid inside the transmission that controls the line pressure. That's probably gonna just, just leak about everywhere. Of course the converter's right there, so there's no good way to get a, a gauge on it. We'll try it here. All right, that, that idle, it should have about 35 PSI. Uh, yeah, it has zero PSI. Got some hardcore bikers out there. It's 49 degrees today. What's that, like 10 degrees Celsius? Pretty cold. Anyway, folks, I have reached the end of my transmission diagnostic abilities. I can read the pressures and check the solenoids, but I'm unable to tell you what, what any of that means. So I called my transmission guy and I described the symptoms. The transmission has all of its gears. It has good line pressure, but in low and reverse, it drags really bad, like it's stuck in two gears at the same time. Also, when you put it in neutral, it seems to want to to wanna go forward. So he said, don't worry about that electronic pressure reading being zero. He said that doesn't mean a whole lot. He said it sounds more like you've got a catastrophic failure inside the transmission and it needs to be rebuilt. Based on his assessment, I have gone ahead and dropped the pan. And as they say, the writing is on the wall. We've got some major shrapnel in here. Anyway, this is bad. We need to pull the transmission out and send it over to my guy to have it rebuilt. He said it's not too, not too bad to have these rebuilt, about, I don't know, somewhere in the $2,000 range. Also, this truck's two-wheel drive, so it shouldn't be too bad to pull it out. All right, we'll start by pulling the drive line. I've got this fancy socket for these Fords. It's a 12 millimeter, 12 point swivel with a short extension. It's made by Sunex. Handy tool to have. Although it's a little tight on this guy. It beats hitting a box end wrench with a with a ball peen hammer. Come on. There we go. Okay, now I gotta try to push the torque converter back. There it goes. Well, sometimes what happens in our, in our climate is the little spud on the end of the torque converter, it gets seized in the crankshaft. So even though the converter bolts are out, the converter wants to stay with the flex plate because that thing's all 
rust it into one piece. Starter is the hardest part on these stupid Fords. Play a little game called How Many Times Can I Kick the Tripod? Okay, well, should be loose. Well, this is pretty sketchy, but if it works, it's gonna be a whole lot easier than messing with that exhaust. Gotta be sketchy like a fox. I did have to pull the sway bar, but that's a whole lot easier than pulling that exhaust. Awesome. I can't believe we just pulled the transmission without even breaking out the torch. Amazing.
Well, I'm pretty sure there's no graceful way to do this. Not by yourself. There you go. He says, rebuilt 4R70W transmission with HD valve body kit. Note, thrust bearing was blown in rear drum. So he installed a new drum, a hub, a spring, a retainer, and a new style bearing. We also have a new torque converter. We should be good to go. Well, he also asked me to bring him the radiator he wanted to flush the transmission cooler he's got a machine you can hook up to it flush all the nasty stuff out now luckily it's pretty easy to remove and install this radiator Tell you what, that's the way to design a radiator. It's been, uh, yeah, less than eight minutes completely installed. Okay, we're gonna put a little grease in the crankshaft snout and then a little bit around these dolphins. Well, hopefully, it won't have to come back out for, for many years. But in case it does, make it a little easier for the next guy. Because it'll probably be me. Alright, I got the torque converter installed. And the transmission is roughly in place. Pretty simple. Just the reverse of how he took it out. But I got myself in a little bit of trouble. There's these caps over the threads on the torque converter. I didn't see those. So I gotta try to pop them off. Hopefully without popping the torque converter out. Oh. The transmission guy told me that the most common problem that they have with carry out transmissions, which is what we have here, which means people installing them themselves, is that they don't get the torque converter installed correctly. I guess that means that the, sp the pump splines don't engage or something and then you know it tears up the pump and causes all kinds of problems. That's it. Yeah. Cool. All right, folks. We're going to skip ahead just a bit. We're almost done. Transmission is installed. 
everything looks good. I don't want to say it's easy, but this is about as straightforward as removing and installing a transmission can possibly get. I mean, honestly, the hardest part of the job is dealing with the starter. Uh, he did tell me to pull this block off here on the cooler lines and flush that out. I did that. I think there's some kind of a relief valve or something in there in case things get jammed up. Yeah, we're ready to add some fluid and take this thing for a ride. Well, he said the thing to do is add maybe five quarts of fluid until it's up on the dipstick and then run the engine for maybe 10 seconds, let the pump fill the converter and circulate the fluid and then just keep repeating that process until until you end up with the uh, fluid still on the dipstick after you shut it off and then we'll have to do the final the final fill with the engine running Okay, we're well up on the stick. Let's do as he says. So we just want, don't want the pump to suck in a bunch of air and run dry for any length of time. I think these transmissions hold like 14 quarts of fluid or something like that when they're totally dry. Yeah, so it's clear off the stick again. 13 and a half quarts later, I've got it where I want it. The ABS light is on. I had a couple of wheel speed sensor codes. I cleared them out, but I'm still getting this weird continuous memory code. So we'll have to deal with that. Well, let's go for a ride. Well, so far so good. I don't feel any dragging. That's a good sign. All right, let me shut it off and we'll see if we can clear that stupid ABS code. There we go. All right. Well. Yeah, let's go for a rip. Here we go. We're in first gear. There's second. There's third. There's fourth. Yeah, we're good. Seems to have solved all the problems. I don't know why that electronic pressure control pressure was zero PSI doesn't seem to make any difference. Yeah, this thing's fixed. Looks like those beans are ready to come out. They've been picking some corn. I haven't seen any beans picked yet. Yeah, they still got a few leaves on them. Another week or so, everybody's gonna be busy. All right, we made it back. No lights on on the dash. Ran the health report. Looks like we're good. We just had the P1000, which means that we cleared the codes and it hasn't run any monitors. And then it has an ignition key circuit. We're not worried about that. What do you think, pupper? Yeah? I think this guy is nuts. It's a heck of a big tractor to be sneaking around that tight little area. Well, I don't see any leaks on the transmission. 
But we've got a heck of a leak on the radiator. So I pulled everything back apart. It looks like what happened is they must have taken these fittings loose on the trans cooler and they left the top one loose. So I just tightened it up. I'm gonna top it off and we'll pressurize it real quick and see, see if we got it. I believe inside this plastic tank there's like a, I don't know what it is, a metal coil and there's a rubber seal between the plastic and the metal and then this quick connect fitting just squeezes that together so hopefully the seal is still good I guess I should have checked that I didn't I didn't think about it he told me they had something that hooked up to the quick connect fittings I didn't know they were gonna be taking them out well a smarter person probably would have checked for leaks before hosing it off well I don't see any more drips Bubbles good. I think we're done here. What do you say, Max? Is it fixed? Yeah, he's ready for lunch. Man, it is way, way too nice out to be working. There's not a cloud in the sky. Well, thanks for sticking it out, guys. That didn't go quite the way I expected. I just assumed, you know, truck's got 107,000 miles. It's pretty clean. It's a basic two wheel drive truck. He doesn't do any towing. I just assumed it would be something simple, you know, a sensor or a solenoid or a wiring harness problem or something like that. You know, I never would have expected a, a catastrophic failure inside the transmission. And honestly, if I had known we were gonna find that, I would have just sent it right to the transmission shop and had them do, do the whole kit and caboodle. You know, they know what they're doing. They, they do it every day. I'm sure they're faster and more efficient than I am. But that doesn't make for a very good video. So, yeah. We're done. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.